So in this episode of What's On The Bench, uh, it's a cuirass. Now this cuirass actually cracked in two places um, in the last tournament. It's unusually thin. So we've measured this with the digital vernier calipers and all around the edge um, and pretty much into the middle where the largest crack was, um, was around about anywhere between 0.6 and 0.8 mil. Um, so we think it's just cracked because of how thin it is as opposed to an issue with heat treatment. So what we've already gone and done off-site is we've welded the two cracks. So you may just be able to see those a little bit. So there was a big crack there and a small one over here. But we've welded and planished those back. But on the inside, you'll see it more clearly. We've left a good thickness of weld due to how thin this is on both. And what we're now going to do is we're actually going to add a supplemental plate to each of those welds riveted on. So it's got a little bit of extra strength. So the plates that I'm going to use I've cut some pieces here. It's 304 stainless. This is one mil thick. Um, and this 304 stainless is, you know, it's stronger than mild steel. Uh, obviously it's not hardenable, the 304, but what it will allow us to do um, is it'll allow us to form and bend it to the inside shape of the cuirass so that it holds form. And then once it's riveted in, it'll obviously give it that extra little bit of thickness and strength in those positions. So we're gonna do that in both of these. The first thing that we need to do is obviously take the sharp corners and these little bits of burrs off from the uh, bevel is here, leave some edges. And then once we've done that, I'm gonna start with the small one, I'm gonna mark the position, I'm gonna drill the holes, I'm gonna drill the holes, I'm gonna piece that over the top and then we'll rivet it in. So now what we've done is we've cut the pieces of stainless, we've rounded the edges off, um, made them less sharp. But what we now need to do, because there's a little bit of a complex curve in these cuirass pieces, or the piece of the cuirass, we need to gently mould this. Now 304 is more malleable. Um, now the way I'm going to do that is just gently with a rubber face mallet, so rather than using a steel hammer on the 304, I'm just going to place that in over where it needs to be. And all I'm going to do is gently Now, as you can tell, this is a loud process, so make sure you wear ear defenders. And it might only be subtle, I don't know whether you can see that. There's a slight curvature now to that, which forms the inside curve of that piece exactly as it needs to be. So now we're gonna drill two holes in this, and then we're gonna obviously drill two holes in the cuirass, rivet it through, and then move on to the bigger one. So one thing that's a little bit different with this breastplate, I'll just bring it in to show you, is that we've drilled the plate now, as you can see. We've drilled the cuirass on the breastplate, back plate even. So that's gonna fit there. However, because the breastplate curves this way, as well as this way, it's quite awkward to get a solid purchase on the inside with an anvil, whether that's rail track or with a horn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create my own rivets, i.e. with formed rivet heads, that I can place on the flat of the anvil, on the out, so it looks like a normal rivet on the outside, and then rivet more sturdily on the inside. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to take a longer nail. So this is a 20 mil roofing nail, three mil in diameter. Clip the tip off so it's a flat edge. I'm going to hold it in the pliers, place it on the anvil, and I'm going to rivet like I normally would, but this will create a rivet head. Then I will cut the head of this off, feed it through, and I'm flat on the anvil. So in 
effect, what I end up with now is a mushroomed overhead, rivet head, a shank and the head. I'll clip that off, feed it through, and then rivet the other side. So what we have here now is obviously the breastplate on the anvil. The rivet that we've just made is pushed through this plate. And what we're gonna do now is use that flat on the anvil, try our best to get the best angle. And we're just gonna rivet this over gently. with the position of the other hole. So I'm going to leave that there like that for now. I'm going to get the second rivet in and then once it's tight, that's what you're left with on the outside. Nice head of rivet and that's what you're left with on the inside. So we'll do the second one now and then we'll move on to the bigger piece. So now we've done the same, we've created the rivet. We've got the second one pushed through as you can probably see. So we're gonna rivet that one over now and finish this plate. And then what I'll do is I'll do the other one. I'll come back and show you the finished result. whatsoever nice and strong and then on the outside all you can see is two two rivets so you've been on the wiser i'll move on i'll do the bigger one same process but this is obviously a larger plate so it's probably going to be four rivets and i'll come back and show you the finished result so i'm just coming back to you now so we did that one previously we've done the same with this plate so we've cut it we've drilled it we've drilled the breast uh, the back plate the cuirass I've done three rivets, this is the last one. And then once this is done, this will be fully repaired. There we have it. No wiggle in that plate or that one, so they're nice and strong the shape to the inside so it's not going to be it's not sticking out and then on the other side all you can see four nice ye olde looking rivets so you wouldn't necessarily be any the wiser with this being stainless it's obviously strong but it's also rust resistant if you wanted to you could recoat the inside of this with black um, which i'll leave up to the owner of the breastplate but yeah jobs are good one.